Yes, when fate weaves a pattern, she uses a large loom. And the threads, the characters of the people she uses, are as varied and as different as civilization itself. Who, for example, would suspect a connection between Sid Samarino, now impatiently pacing the floor of his office, waiting for Nora Tragg to make her appearance? Who would connect this with Mary McKean, as she slowly walks the hard floor of her prison cell? Or with Mary's unspoken prayer that her lawyer, Perry Mason, remain free, that he be successful in evading the police, at least until he's found proof of her innocence? Who but fate could connect these two scenes with a third now being enacted in the old apartment house where Mason appears to be making movies? Right now, as a large crowd presses against the windows to watch, Della Street and a handsome young man, a private detective, are being violently romantic before a hospital background. As we hear... All right, cut! All right, cut! That's all for ten minutes. Take a break, everybody. Uh, Miss Stone, would you come over here? Oh, my pleasure. How was I? As an actress, you make a fine lawyer's secretary, Della. Better stop calling her Della, Paul. Oh, no one can hear us. I know, but you can never tell when that officer will be back. Harrigan? Harrigan. Harry, you don't Mr. think... Mr. Patterson. Well, then, Mr. Patterson... I'll tell you what I think of Harrigan. Yeah, what? Well... He's a good, smart cop. And he'd have seen through us a long time ago if he wasn't movie-struck. Which makes us lucky. Very lucky, Miss Stone. And we want to keep him movie-struck, too. Not by any word or action do we want to stir him up. Because if we do, it won't take him a minute to remember who we are and that there are warrants out for us. In other words, with Officer Harrigan, a real job of acting But is... the best. It's our insurance. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Tyler? Clear as a bell, Mr. Patterson. Mm. You've been watching that mob outside, Chief. You've been watching them while they've been watching us. H have you seen any reaction that will help Mary? Well, we'll know after we run off the pictures we've been taking through those windows. Well, then, Perry... Uh, Mr. Patterson, mm. do you really think... Yes, I do. Now, look at it this way. Doc Keegan and Liz could not have put on a scene like this without help. Not even with Mary doped. We know they faked the movie company just as we're doing. Yes, I understand that. I realize these hospital scenes were much too technical to be made with what help they could get in Wallace home. Too technical to be made there without arousing interest in the wrong places. That's right. So they flew Mary to New York and picked up catches, catch can workers who didn't much care how they earned a few extra bucks. And? Well, those people read the papers. They know Mary's behind the eight ball. They know she's in jail on a kidnap charge. All right. Now, suppose one of them takes a look through our window and sees a woman who appears to be Mary, you, in exactly the same scene. Wouldn't your mouth drop open? Wouldn't yes. you get worried and wonder what was up? Especially when all the time you thought you were in the clear? Wouldn't you try to insure yourself against trouble by nosing around, trying to find out what was happening? Yes, I guess I would. No wonder you're such a good lawyer. Hmm, praise, I guess. Uh, while you two admire each other, I think I'll get set for the next series of pictures. Okay. And it's a lucky thing you didn't go in for crime. Oh, why? Well, because with your particular flair and understanding, you'd have made a mighty dangerous criminal. What's that about a hmm? criminal, Miss Stone? Uh, oh, Officer Harrigan. Uh-huh. I was just telling Mr. Patterson here that, um, our, um, police force is our greatest insurance against criminals. Oh, Thanks. Are you ready for me yet, Mr. Patterson? Why, no, not quite. Uh, look, this wouldn't be a gag. A gag? In what way, officer? Oh, the old runaround. You were on the level about asking me to play a part? Of course, it just hasn't come up yet. I'd hate to be making a fool of myself in front of my family after bragging I was going to be in pictures. And uh, speaking of pictures, you've got me stumped, Miss Stone. I... I know your face, know I've seen it, but I can't place the name of any of your pictures. Well, there have been so many, I guess you... You're going to laugh, but I seem to place your picture in a newspaper. W why, officer... Well, the uh, officer probably saw your picture when those jewels were stolen. Oh, yes, that must be it. Jewels? Oh, now, just between you, me, and the gatepost, ain't most of those jewel robberies for the publicity? I refuse to commit myself until I speak to my lawyer. I'd keep your secret. <laughs> as long as there's no warrant out for you, you don't need to worry about me. Warrant? Ah, uh, here comes our director, uh, Mr. Tyler. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Patterson? Oh, what? Uh, hello, officer. Hello. I, uh, notice we're just about ready to get underway again. Um, how about putting Officer Harrigan's scene in here? Then he can stand by if we need him for a retake. Yeah, but, uh, well, all right, if the officer doesn't mind waiting a few minutes. Me? Say, Mr. Tyler, I don't mind waiting a bit. Playing with dynamite, aren't they? 
trying to keep Officer Harrigan's mind occupied, trying to keep him from connecting their faces with the newspaper photos labeled Wanted for Kidnapping. Meanwhile, in the private office of Sid Samarino's Roomba Palace. At last. Come in, baby. Baby, huh? Oh, it's you. <laughs> Why, Sid, I didn't know you cared. I thought it was Nora. Where's Nora, Joe? Hasn't showed up yet. Well, close the door. I get enough of that music. Uh, That's better. Why isn't she here? She's usually here before five. You uh, haven't lit a torch for Nora. Be yourself. I thought not. I need that kid. She can do something for me. Ah, now you sound more like Sid. Hey, why don't you ever break down and give me a box of these cigars? Buy your own cigars. Mm. Nothing wrong with your graft. Is it the phone call from Myrtle? Oh, Grandma, what a long nose you've got. Good guy to stay on the right side of, sir. Look, dump your ashes in the ashtray, not on the rug. Best mouthpiece in town. Plenty of friends in the right places. Uh-huh, high-priced. Oh, well, if you're worried about money, I might buy a piece Does of Does anything this. about dough? It's just... Well, can't afford to get mixed up in things. Start the cops watching the rumba palace. In the private room. Forget that room. You know, if you'd stay in one place and give me an idea Forget of it. what this is all about. Forget it. I... Just you know what a smart mouthpiece can do to any guy in cross-examination. I get up on the witness stand, I'll buy Liz Wren, and before you know it, Perry Mason is dragged in the rumble palace and everything else. Sure, not talking object. But when it's been said, it's been said. Hey, wait a minute. What are we talking about? The McKean trial. Mary McKean, Mason's client. Murtaugh's trying to put Mason and the McKean dame away. I know that. Murtaugh but... wants me to alibi his client, Liz Wren, if he needs it. Oh. What happened to Nora? Oh, I don't get her connection. I alibi Liz. Nora alibis me. Oh. Her old man's a homicide lieutenant. With a homicide lieutenant's daughter backing me up, what I say ought to swing a little weight. Mm. Think you can get away with it? Me? Now, don't roll those eyes at me, Papa. I'm not a stage-struck kid. No. You're nothing but a bum. Oh, that'll be no, huh? Yeah? Okay, send her in. On your way, Joe. What, you mean you want me to beat it? What do you think? That's what I think. Sid, they said you want... Oh. Uh, it's okay, Nora. I'm on my way out. Well, I didn't mean to interrupt. But... Well, Joe say he was on his way out. Don't let us keep you, Joe. I won't. But uh, watch out for the guy, Nora. Hmm? He's in a romantic mood. Oh. Go on, get out, bum. Quit tipping my hand. I know I'm awfully late today, Sid, That's but... That's all right, baby. They said... You know, Joe wasn't kidding. Hmm? About me being in a romantic mood. Oh. If you're afraid, I'll... Uh, I'll hold your hand. I'm not afraid. So well. You see, I trust you. Is that good or bad? I think it's good. Did you want anything special? Yeah, I did. Well? Look, I've got a lot to say. Why don't we skip out of this joint and have dinner? Oh, Sid, I'd love to. What? But... Well, Mother and Dad are expecting me. Got a telephone at your home, don't you? Well, yes, but... Go on, Nora. For Sid. I promised I'd eat home tonight. There's my private phone. Uh, Sid, I shouldn't... I'm even dialing the number for you. This is pretty important to me, Nora. Well... I better grab the phone. Somebody will answer in a minute. <laughs> You're sweet. Sid. Hello, Bonnie. This is Nora. Well, I'm still downtown, Bonnie. Will you tell Mother I can't get home for dinner? I... Yes, I have to dine with a producer. Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll put me on the stage. I'll put you any place you like. No, I'm not sure what time I'll be home, but I'll, I'll see you later, Bonnie. Goodbye. All set? Yes. So what are we waiting for? Let's get out of this joint. And then you tell me what you want of me? Then I tell you what I want of you. What a strange pattern fate weaves. And there's another thread in the pattern calculated to send Mary to prison and her lawyer right along with her. 